developers. Uh, we have Wikimedia uh, Foundation developers, but also volunteer developers. Um, we're going to do it very free format. Uh, Ryan Lane and I are going to walk around. Um, one of you asks a question, and we find someone who can answer it. We're going to do that until we're out of time. So, who has a question? Uh, it, is, it is on the online schedule that this session is in bats. Yeah, oh, that would be cool if someone could like monitor IRC maybe for questions. So we're still looking for our first question. Don't be shy. Yeah. There we are. So I hear, um, oh, my name is Jonathan. Um, I'm a Wikipedian, I guess. <laughs> um, so my, um, my question is regarding, um, I, I read something on there about social media, you know, you can't ignore it anymore. You know, so uh, social networking, is there any like plans for adding like more like, I guess, Facebook-ish like features to MediaWiki or? Yeah, in fact, we have a Facebook developer right here. <laughs> he's been working with us for a long time, and he's been working very hard on integrating Facebook with Wikipedia. Just kidding. Um, no, the uh, overall sort of thinking around this stuff is um, there. I'm Eric. I'm the VP of Engineering at Wikimedia. Uh, I've uh, done some media wiki development, not a ton, um, but uh, mostly I'm a manager guy, uh, so I know what, what's going on. Um, but I don't do it. <laughs> so uh, the the social stuff, uh, the the stuff that we're thinking about very seriously are w what are some of the paradigms uh, on sites like Facebook that actually uh, would make sense. So things like feeds, notifications, uh, better systems for keeping track of what's going on, better systems for uh, connecting with things that you care about. Uh, what are the things that don't make sense? Uh, probably things like ooh, I will import all my friends and bring them on uh, Wikipedia and talk about the same things on Wikipedia that I'm talking about on Facebook. Like, there's no logic in that. Or, oh, it's so cool to like things, so we will add like buttons everywhere because liking things is sweet. No. <laughs> so we, we have to think very carefully about what kind, kinds of functionality are we adding and why. Um, but certainly we want to meet the expectations of users and use paradigms that they understand instead of trying to make up our own stuff in our own visual language uh, for everything which we're currently doing. Uh, so we're definitely going to have some things in Wikipedia more and more that look more like things that people know on sites like Facebook and Quora, but that doesn't mean that Wikipedia itself is going to become like Facebook and Quora. Does that make sense? Okay, introduce yourself. <coughs> Uh, I'm another one of those manager types. My name is Terry Che. I'm the director of engineering, uh, features engineering at the foundation. Uh, another kind of also is because um, there are two types of questions when you're asking about social media. Is like, w what is making Wikipedia or uh, Media Wiki more social in terms of like adopting the affordances of social media, like news feeds and things like that. Uh, which Eric answered, and then there'd be a second question about integrating with social media, like being able to tweet stuff and things like that. Um, there are currently no plans, per se. Uh, I'd imagine that's something that the Editor Engagement Experimentation Group that is under the Director of Experimentation would answer, uh, test that sometime this year. So it depends what question. Uh, so I am Daniel Renfro, I work at Vistaprint in uh, Boston, and I've got a very abstract question for anyone who knows how to do this. So uh, the phase three software is quite mature. I was wondering if there was any uh, ideas about what phase four was going to be. <laughs> so uh, I'm Brian Viber, I'm the lead software architect at Wikimedia. Um, we don't really plan to do a 
whole rewrite as a phase four, but what we're basically looking at doing is doing lots of iterative improvements where after a couple of years, you sort of swapped out every component and you realize it's a whole new system. Um, we've made a lot of changes uh, to the internals. Uh, the last couple of versions of MediaWiki have been a lot more uh, dependent on front-end JavaScript for some of the more advanced uh, user interface improvements. Uh, and so we have a whole infrastructure to support uh, loading JavaScript modules and CSS styles and all the things that go along with that. And um, the sort of next big step is that editor and parser stuff. Uh, so we're changing how templates work uh, by creating a new Lua-based template system or uh, we have a new uh, parser that's being tied in with the visual editor system uh, which is um, intended to basically more accurately round trip things between the editor and uh, the back end system. And uh, by the time we've uh, done all those and also a lot of the front end changes such as um, the Athena skin project that uh, Miranda presented the other day, um, it's going to be, it's going to look very different both on the outside and on the inside. Uh, but we expect this to be more of a, a progression than a brand new phase. Um, I'm Megan. I work for a software company and basically we run a site from MediaWiki to do all of our documentation about our product that I'm managing. So I was kind of wondering about your development process and um, how you kind of prioritize the list of new features you're going to work on and if there's any idea of maybe going towards a continuous release idea or is it always like when do you decide to do a cutoff for maybe a new version of software? <laughs> Hi, um, I'm yet another manager type. I'm the uh, director of platform engineering and um, I'm, uh, Rob Lanfear. Um, and uh, so we are moving, um, we're doing a number of things to move to a faster development model. So we um, uh, fairly recently started deploying the software every two weeks, whereas we used to deploy like every six months or so. Um, and similarly, we're building out a continuous integration infrastructure so that we can um, actually continually deploy to our test infrastructure uh, on a regular basis. So that's, um, uh, that's what we're doing on that front. On the feature selection front, um, that's, that's a more distributed thing. I'm not necessarily the best person to answer that one uh, um, for anything more than my group. So is the question how we prioritize or how we prioritize how features? We prioritize and pick features? Okay. Well, in, in general, uh, a lot of this uh, is based on data and research uh, on what we see in terms of behavior in Wikimedia sites. So a couple of years ago, uh, after we sort of had, had for a long time uh, data around, okay, the numbers of active editors are um, going down, going down 1.7%, 1.6% decline year over year in active editors. We started digging into that a bit more and saying, okay, what's the actual data on this? What's actually happening to new users? And we did a study that was called the uh, Editor Trends Study. If you Google that phrase, you'll find the study. And uh, that showed us that uh, a lot of the stuff that's happening that's causing this de decline is happening in the very first few edits that people make, uh, so people quickly give up after they've made the first few edits. Uh, we've done research that goes more into why that's the case, and we've learned a lot about things like reverts, uh, and uh, the way that certain types of messages influence uh, user behavior early on, so if you get a lot of warnings, or a lot of good, and get a lot of negative messages, then you're more likely to leave. And so a lot of this has driven and influenced our product decision making. And so we take this data and we walk through it together and we say, okay, well, we know that a lot of this stuff is happening in the early life cycle, so we're moving up the priority of features that are affecting the early life cycle of editors. And so a lot of the things that we're working on right now, uh, like notifications and messaging, we're working on because they're early life cycle features. Um, because they are uh, things like, if you're a new user, you have no idea what a talk page is, you give up uh, the stuff that we tell you, even the warning messages that we send you, you don't even know that they are warning messages or what they are. Uh, so a lot of the work that we do right now is focused on this area because our research has shown us that that's where the pain points are. So generally we try to be data driven. When we do development, we do a lot of A-B testing now. Uh, so that means 
hey, here's a version of this feature with the button in green, here's the version of the feature with the button in red. How many people click the button? Oh, let's make it green. So a lot of it is trying to collect data in real time and saying, okay, well, if we change it a little bit, then it's going to work better. But uh, some of it is more uh, strategic <coughs> research of what's happening to the community and why. Can I already ask a question? Hi, I'm Domas, I'm retired. Uh, I have a question, but like, I don't know, probably for some director of WebScale or something. Uh, <laughs> there are lots of features that will be in future awesome and like Flow, Echo, whatnot. Uh, I just wonder how are they going to be built on this 2001 level of kind of style of architecture? Are you just going to change something in the infrastructure and architecture to support like proper web scale things like, you know, 10x increase in, in edit traffic and so on? Like, how, how do you look at that? Who can answer That's that? an excellent question. I guess this is somewhat my responsibility since uh, Echo and Flow, which are notifications and messaging, uh, are part, part of it. Does everyone know what Echo and Flow are? Does, <laughs> anyone, does anyone not know? Okay, so Echo is the name for the notification system that we're planning on building. Um, basically, what we're finding is, is there's no consistent way in MediaWiki to round trip messages, anything, any sort of updates to the user. Like on some things, you, you check your watch list. On other things, you might see a, your bar on the top right turn red, and other times you might get an email. There's really no consistent platform, and that's very important. Also, when you consider uh, uh, a big part of MediaWiki going forward is mobile. And um, there's mobile push, and there's the mobile web, and there's uh, those things too. So there. Uh, needs to be a, 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 a closing of that loop. When you get, say, a message on your talk page or something like that, you need to be notified that, uh, uh, about that and it should be notified in a consistent manner. So instead of uh, on a per extension basis or whatever of trying to figure out how we're gonna do that, the extension will just trigger a notification and then the no notification system should ensure some sort of deliverability to uh, what I guess would be as the user would want in terms of how they would want, want to receive that information. Um, and uh, Flow is basically a kind of a replacement for user talk. Um, right now, uh, the way user talk works is completely, does not resemble any existing affordances of the web. And we to, need to make that more like a messaging system, more like the way people do interact uh, when they do it because that is how new users work. They do not know how a talk page works and they certainly don't know how to respond to a user talk message. Um, both of those require new infrastructure. In the case of notifications, we don't really have to worry about the database infrastructure per se because um, we're just delivering that. So um, not that much data needs to live very long. It doesn't actually have to be as reliable as, um, as other pieces of the system because we're just delivering a notification and it may or may not work at a given moment. It's, it's okay to drop a few. Um, for that, uh, the major piece would probably be uh, some sort of revamp of the queuing system. The way the job queue works really right now is not in a reliable manner. Uh, for third party installs, it's totally fine since the number of messaging messages going through the job queue would probably be very small, but it would make sense uh, to abstract that. And so uh, we have an engineer who in their spare time is working on abstracting the job queuing system so that the queue could be replaced by a more modern queuing system like a Zero or RabbitMQ or ActiveMQ so that it's a replaceable abstracted component. And that is a very important thing going forward in terms of that challenge. In terms of the messaging system, um, what we found out is we've only at the foundation have been able to scale one thing uh, very uh, in terms of the size and that is, is the revision table and the way we did it was probably, Brian knows way better than me, but it sounds like it was done like in 2003 or four, a long time ago and it was very ad hoc and it was a great solution when you only had like four or five machines running all of Wikipedia, but it doesn't resemble anything the way any modern, uh, like uh, Web 2.0 or any other modern site behaves. So in order to uh, handle uh, data, 
that is going to grow as fast as, say, the revision table without like trying to map things onto the revision table, which is barely holding together as it is. We need to think more in terms of the way modern websites like Twitter and other things store their data. And the way they usually do that is they shard across multiple machines. If people don't know what that means, it's just a way of scaling out your data so that it lives in multiple locations. Uh, so, so that data is what's known as denormalized across the database. And you denormalize it along an arbitrary manner so that the load across the machines is even. And it's not just in order to handle the size of the data, it's also to present the load to the database in a very, very even manner. And um, so uh, unfortunately, the same engineer in his spare time also is working on charting that data structure out so that uh, we could probably uh, look into how we can do this in a, a more normalized manner so that data that needs to be stored in the system can easily be stored on a, a denormalized on a sharded data store. Now in order to handle that at scale, uh, uh, we're going to need a larger uh, RAM cache known as a memcache to handle that. Uh, right now, uh, MediaWiki already supports that has since the since memcache was like in its very early days. Uh, the thing is, is that code is very old. It's what's known as user space memcache. That update to use uh, more lo modern libraries, like the, the memcache has already been done, but we're currently not using that. So those are some of the challenges that we need to resolve going forward in this uh, next year uh, in order to implement those two features. And those would probably form pieces of, say, the phase four that Brian talked. So he gave the long answer. I'm going to give you the short one. Yeah, you We're going to switch everything to MongoDB because it's web scale. <laughs> I have an additional question as a moderator. You mentioned two fundamental infrastructural changes that someone was working on in his spare time. With regards to priorities and dependencies, what are your thoughts about that? Because it sounds a bit strange to me. Yeah. So um, basically, notification messaging are slated for this fiscal year. And this fiscal year began in July. So uh, in order to deal with these problems, I asked actually an engineer in Rob's group. Uh, I kind of stole him for a little bit to if he had some time to look at these sort of things. Um, Obviously, uh, we have engineering, also in Rob's group, in performance engineering that will do that. It's just that right now, there are major problems that are, are much more important in terms of the, the, the parser and as well in the templating system and the time it takes currently on our servers. So uh, I don't want to like take Tim's time or other people's time and have them look at this when they're in the middle of working on a, a very important problem. But um, there will be more engineering resources thrown at it. It's just, I had to do it outside the, the fiscal year. Thank you, Terry. Next I, question. I would like to mention that I'm also working on that. It's one of my goals for the year as well. Brilliant. Next question. Hello, my name is Yaron Karan. I'm, I do uh, semantic media wiki stuff. Um, uh, one uh, one really nice feature of of uh, WordPress and I guess some other applications is um, that there's a really nice way to download and install extensions uh, via the interface via the web interface uh, and that includes you know reviews and uh, all that sort of thing uh, associated with it. Uh, I kn I know there have been I guess two aborted attempts to try to add something like that into MediaWiki. Uh, and those those uh, didn't work out for various reasons. But uh, my question is, is is that something that I, I'm still not? It's still not entirely clear to me that that is something that that uh, Wikimedia people would support uh, due to reservations about security problems or that sort of thing. I just want to know if there's any opinion on that. Can you pass the mic to the person right next to you? <laughs> okay. As far as I know, you've, you've done some work in that area. Maybe you can comment on that and we'll see where we go from there. Uh, yeah, well, so I did some work on this in 2010 during Google Summer of Code projects. 
Um, but the Zitnos got finished because it was a way too big project for the time I had and the experience I had at this time. Um, personally, I think this is something um, a lot of people could really benefit from. Uh, well, I, I think the whole MetaWiki ecosystem could get a huge boost from having such a system. Um, so I'd love to see it being there. Um, and I wouldn't mind working on this myself. Um, but after this project, I talked to, to the foundation on um, if they would want to throw more resources at it. And at the time, the answer was no, because we don't really need this ourselves. Uh, I don't know if uh, the, the foundation changed position on this in the meantime, but yeah. Well, so, um, oh, sorry, just to clarify, I, I did know he was working on it. Just to, uh, but I thought, I thought there were security issues in there, too, so anyway. But uh, just as a general note, we do generally want that, uh, but we're not always able to prioritize it because it's not something that we actually need for our own sites. But it is something that would be really nice for a lot of things. Uh, and I think it's also something that we can start to tie in as we improve our Git and Garrett code review system uh, to the point where it'll actually be easy enough for people to sign up and create their own repositories uh, for their own extensions, and uh, then those can be linked directly into a rating and download and install and configure system. Uh, so hopefully we'll have that in a year or two, uh, but it's not on the top of uh, our list at the moment. But if people are really excited about doing it, I really hope we can make it happen. Mm -hmm. uh, just one uh, other thing I want to add on this. Is, is Greg Varnum's not here by any chance, is he? No, okay. Um, so, you know, one of the things that uh, uh, Greg is, uh, is working on now is um, starting to build a, 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 like a community of people that are, want to work on this sort of non-Wikimedia-centric uh, development efforts um, uh, that um, uh, associated with MediaWiki. And, um, and I think that's, that's one step where um, it, it would be good to see some, so a little bit of outside leadership on um, some of these things that aren't necessarily things that Wikimedia needs, but that um, uh, that you know a lot of other folks would really benefit from. And so um, I would encourage you to to find Greg and and talk more about this this topic. And I just wanted to add that. Um, so I, I've also been lo I looked looked at uh, your, your your room's code. Uh, uh, say. Uh, I'm a team of staff. I work as a software developer also for the features team. Uh, so I looked at uh, Jiren's code for um, uh, that as well. And it, it was pretty, a very nice idea, and I think it'll be great to have that as well. But I just wanted to add that um, for the most part, it doesn't need something on MediaWiki.org itself. So it should be able to uh, develop this probably as an in independent thing that will probably benefit the, the project. I just wanted to add that. I think we're ready for our next question. Does anyone have a question on design or user interface by any chance? Uh, I'm Jarek Tuszynski. I do a lot of work on, uh, on commons. And it uh, mm, seems like each uh, site I go, I have uh, my own preferences, my own watch list. Uh, it's kind of getting pretty hard to keep track of all of those. Is there any chance of uh, having centralized it? I mean, I already log in as a sa single login. Works great. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those things that is kind of is supposed to come along for the ride. Basically, um, when uh, the f when the product team was deciding on what is important for three years from now. Uh, they wrote down all these features that would move the numbers on editor engagement, and all through all of the features that came out pointed to three things: uh, notifications, messaging, and global profile. Um, unfortunately, I basically said we can only do two of those thing, three things, and Eric said notifications and messaging. <laughs> I was kind of hoping for. Uh, global profile um, and notifications. Um, in reality, we're going to have to do some of those things in order to do messaging at, and notifications at the minimum. 
uh, notifications, while it won't store the global preferences, need to have some concept of aggregating that watch list information so that those notifications appear. Um, some sort of single sign-on will need to be uh, addressed in a, a more logical manner. I mean, we do have single sign-on now, but um, you can still create uh, accounts, I believe, um, on other systems. It's, people can reserve accounts in your name and a few other things, right? Is that right? Brian knows much better than me. It's, it's almost there. Um, in terms of preferences, I'm not too sure. That sounds like that might be a, a more difficult problem, but we'll we, we definitely should look at it um, when we're doing these <laughs> other two things. Say, my language, yeah, yeah, yes, and that is really actually a problem we're already running into when we're specking out notifications because how do we actually uh, deliver that notification when we don't actually have a universal store of what your preference language is? So um, additionally, if we want to have sane OAuth and OpenID support, we have to have global profile as well. Yeah. What I would like to add is that to Terry's, um, sorry, I'm Ron Katow, I'm a software developer at the foundation. Um, I would like to add to what Terry said that um, global preferences are actually not hard to implement. implement. Um, Andrew did it once and then he lost the code, but he like, he, like did it in a day. Um, the major problem with uh, global preferences is um, th there's two things really. It's a user experience thing uh, in terms of um, which preferences do you want to be global and which preferences do you want to remain local? Like what is an intelligent choice? Like you know, it's quite reasonable for you to want, to want your language to be the same everywhere. But there might be, you know, if you're multilingual, then for instance, I, I speak Dutch, English, German, and French. Um, if I am working on the Dutch Wikipedia, I probably want my interface in Dutch. If I'm working on the English Wikipedia, I probably want me to have the interface in English. If I'm working on the Kazakh Wikipedia, I probably want to have an English interface as well. So, it's you know. This is a little bit of bike shedding to, this is a little bit of, but to you not know, address the main issue, which is the global profile. Well, what I'm saying is that um, there is a, so there's a user experience issue of which, which preferences make sense, global preferences, which ones don't. And there's a user interface issue of how do you actually present this in a way that doesn't involve 200 checkboxes and you know isn't going to be absolutely an absolutely terrible interface. So those are the things that Andrew, who's not here at this moment, I think, um, identified as the major problems with um, having global preferences. The actual technical implementation is not difficult. Let's do it. Hello, I'm, my name is Salvador. I'm user of the Wikipedia in Spanish. And I'm gonna make a question, I hope it's not uh, out of the topic. Uh, my question is, uh, there's tools I've been using, like the Etherpad or Titanpad, or, and I, those online pads, uh, tools, that are also for uh, collaborative text writing and several people are writing at the same time one same text and their contributions they are colored so if I'm writing a part of the text and my user is in red that part of text is in red is attributed to me and some other people have them in other colors and I wonder if that would be possible to have it in MediaWiki uh, so uh, the attribution for a uh, entry can be split to to the contributors. So I am um, I am on the visual editor team, and collaborative editing is something we want to do in visual editor in the future. Um, as you mentioned, there are a few um, apart from it just being hard to do technically. Um, there are a few issues that need to be sorted out, especially in the area of attribution, because how do you attribute an edit that was like, you know, like you made one eighth of the edit and I wrote half of it and this other person wrote a quarter and you know, how's that gonna work? Um, so that is something we haven't really thought about yet but need to. Um, but we do want to have collaborative editing in visual editor um, in time. And there's a Google Summer of Code student uh, named Ashish Debay currently working on a project where he's basically laying the groundwork for collaborative editing 
in the sense that um, if he pulls off his project, what we'll have at the end of the summer is an editor where you will be able to join someone else's edit, edit session read only, so you will be able to see them edit. You won't actually be able to collaborate yet because that's a lot harder to do with conflicts and stuff. Um, but it'll be a major step forward in, in that. Um, so as I said, it's not nearly there yet. We haven't started working on it. We haven't even started thinking about some of the issues that exist with attribution. But it is definitely something we want to do. And I think I'm going to pass the mic to Eric because <coughs> you might know better than me what Mark Holmquist is up to with his all Etherpad light integration, right? Um, there, there is a, a prototype Etherpad uh, MediaWiki integration if you're interested. Uh, it's at etherpad.wmflabs.org slash wiki. etherpad.wmflabs.org slash wiki. Uh, and uh, basically what it does is it takes Etherpad Lite uh, and it embeds it uh, and it allows you to, uh, instead of clicking on edit, you click on collaborate and that instantiates an Etherpad session on the page that you're on. And you can then um, multi. Uh, uh, you can then edit that page with multiple users at the same time. So you can share that link with other users, and you can collaborate, and then save it as a single edit. Uh, once you're done, it pulls in uh, the people's names of the people who are editing it into the edit summary. So it'll say in the edit summary, uh, so and so uh, edited this page, and either editor. Uh, so there's the extension is called either editor. Uh, it is in prototype stage. If you want to hack on it. Um, go to uh, either edit slash wiki uh, there are a bunch of pages on the main page where you can leave comments and so forth um, and it's uh, something that I hope we might be able to deploy to mediawiki.org um, my motivation for experimenting this with this is that uh, at the Wikimedia Foundation we're using etherpad for a lot of stuff I know that the community uses it a lot as well and so we may not be able to wait two three years until we have something that's half uh, workable in visual editor uh, having something that's uh, at least good enough to do a collaborative editing session in wiki text and then save it back to the wiki would be a nice start. Uh, so maybe I can rope Brian into this project a little bit, get some code review time from him, <laughs> uh, and maybe get it up on MediaWiki.org. But yeah, it's 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 in development. Now, as we're talking about a contribution, I wonder what is the status of all these wiki trust and all these blame maps and trust maps that were being worked on. So, um, it, he, they were actually going to answer the question. So, um, a number of these projects are currently being worked on in labs by the original authors of these. Does that answer your question? I also happen to know that uh, Luca D'Alfaro, who you might know from years and years ago from the original Wikitrust, I think he has he has a PhD student that I believe is interested in ripping out the blame functionality and implementing it in, in more sane language than OCaml. Um, and they were I, I, t I talked to Luca a few months ago and he was really excited about it um, as to how it's actually when it's actually going to happen. I have no idea because those people never got in touch with me. But uh, we'll we'll see how that plays out. But th there's nothing going on there, foundation side. But there's a bunch of third-party projects where we may or may not know those people. We may or may not know what they're doing. Yeah, I'm Jan Einali. I'm the chair of Wikimedia Sweden. This is not so much a question, but a request or a suggestion. When working with Glam, it would be really nice to have some more statistics. So, how about a sort of global link search? Well, so basically the, 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 the typical thing that comes up whenever something global is needed is there is a choice. Uh, you can choose to aggregate every single piece of information from all the wikis into one table, or you can decide to iterate uh, them through a search. Um, with global usage, we decided to, do, to go with the global way. Uh, but for link search, uh, it may be more appropriate to go through the iterative way. Um, this is currently not implemented native as an extension, but I'm 99% sure that this is done on a tool server as a tool server tool. And if not, I'd be happy to create that today for you. Uh, so there's that. Uh, if you can't find it, please ask me later. So just that. Basically, the trade-off there is that um, with, with global usage, which shows you where an image is used across all projects, um, 
it is a popular enough feature that it's worth for us to put, like, to actually put code in MediaWiki and devote it, our infrastructure to like collecting that data. Um, things like global link search and global whatever your thing is search um, are you know are not worth that effort as much. Um, so in that case, you're most likely going to have a tool server tool, which is quite possibly less well maintained and slower. But you know you're that will like you know that will annoy all the twelve people using it. So yeah. Um, although I've never seen it done, um, I think it's actually also possible to do this native as an extension. The, those queries are very well indexed, so I, um, it's also possible to perhaps look into an extension where it knows the site matrix, iterates through the wikis. Anyway, well, well, when I asked this last year whether it was sane to do an all wiki query, it was said um, it's, it's no problem because we can share the connections, it's only like 10, 10 connections or something. Yeah, well, well, we'll see, but uh, it's certainly possible on a tool server and had it done within like two or three seconds, so that's still uh, yeah. uh, reasonable. So, anyway. Calling a three second query reasonable in the context well, of production just hurts my feelings. Sure, <laughs> on tool server is reasonable. <laughs> just saying, just okay. saying 865 wikis, it's, it's less reasonable in production is on saying. Oh. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Daniel Kinsler. I w work for uh, Wikimedia Germany. Um, I would actually like to follow up on the question about the blame maps, or well, I like to call it uh, wiki praise rather than wiki blame. But you know where to put the blame. Um, when I talked to uh, to Luca about this earlier this year, uh, his estimate was that uh, in order to implement this in the same way, uh, same way. Um, we would actually need to store about twice the information per revision that we are storing now. So the question is really, if, if someone comes along and implements this, is the foundation ready to actually throw the resources at this? Uh, because I think it would be an enormously important feature to have to actually be able to see who put this word, this sentence there. We're not ready yet. <laughs> So uh, Luca uh, sent us his estimates as well. And uh, basically, uh, we encourage him to uh, run a first experiment in labs and uh, to actually pull in some data and uh, build a media wiki extension proper. But uh, the revision table, as Terry pointed out, is already uh, pretty scary uh, in terms of the sharding strategy used today. So um, we cannot do that without some major architectural work. Uh, so it may be possible that we implement blame maps for some subset of data somewhere. Uh, but certainly not tomorrow for all languages and all revisions. Like uh, uh, we're currently still running like a fairly uh, simple addition uh, to the English Wikipedia revision data of SHA-1 uh, hashes for all revisions. And that's been like a huge, um, major, major undertaking in terms of the amount of time. It yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, we're not ready for it yet, uh, so I wouldn't expect it uh, in 2012. Uh, it's, it's a killer feature. It's a feature that a lot of people really would like to see. I don't see it as like an editor engagement feature that drives in new people, but it's certainly the kind of thing that you need to do uh, uh, series work because uh, parsing a history uh, of a page with uh, a thousand revisions and trying to find out who added what right now is a huge pain. So I would like to see it eventually, but it's probably not a near-term thing, even if Luca manages to build like the base functionality. Next question. Uh, this is Megan again. So uh, a complaint that I get from my customers that are reading my wiki and trying to learn about the product that I'm describing and all the different pages is, the search feature and you know when they search for something the wide variety of the pages show up that return the results but I'd like to see a way maybe to weight the results and maybe force certain ones to pop up first rather than others is there any way to, to get that to happen am I missing something or who wants to answer that so Oren Bachman would really be the, pers uh, the best person to answer it. this question. Um, Brian. Yeah, since Oren's not here, uh, I'll just sort of briefly mention, we do have a um, Apache Lucene-based search engine 
um, which is what we actually run on Wikipedia, which runs a lot better than what is currently still the default in MediaWiki. Uh, so you may want to seriously consider switching to that uh, if you're not already uh, experimenting with that. Um, and that does uh, weighting by uh, things that are in the title as well as things that are in the text. Uh, and it seems to return much better results than uh, the default MySQL based search. Uh, so that's what I would recommend you do for now and uh, hopefully we can improve the default as well. Maybe I can mention a project that, I, I'm not sure if it still exists. It was um, an experimental thing a couple of years ago. It's called Woogle, like wiki Google thing. Uh, it's also Lucene based, but works quite differently and has a quite different focus. Um, and uh, as I said, I don't know if these people are still around, still doing it, but maybe have a look. Next question. Hi, I'm Eric, user EMW. I was uh, in a session about uh, Wikimedia research and uh, I was wondering if there's a, if there are any plans to uh, port the page view data statistics uh, currently exported by Damas and consumed by uh, user Henrik to uh, more uh, usable infrastructure say on labs or something like that. So we do have plans uh, to move more in analytics infrastructure into labs. Um, it's not um, something that's probably going to happen within the next few months, but um, hopefully in the next six months to a year, we'll have more analytics infrastructure in labs. Wait, wait, what is? Oh. Uh, the raw data is already on dumpster.wikimedia.org or download.wikimedia.org or whatever it's called at this point in time. We have time for a next question. Ryan? Well, Domas, come on. Hi, I'm Domas, I'm retired. But, uh, anyway, the, uh, uh, from the statistics point where like, we're talking all the time with analytics people, we want to build out, I mean, people want to build out real-time uh, page view infrastructure. So that could be both queried from internally from MediaWiki deployment and so, you know, like things like sort category by uh, how popular pages are in it. It's like these features would be fantastic. We just show similar pages in the same category that are popular and so on. So like for that, we definitely would have to build out the real-time infrastructure. And the Lutex team is coming up with something called Kraken, which would allow, you know, do everything with that data. But uh, there is also the, I mean, we keep these projects in mind that maybe we can have like API access to that data or something like that. If, like, if, we, if we come up with an efficient way to serve it, we would do that, but for that I have to go back from retirement or someone else has to do that. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's really like, I, I see that data as incredibly useful for both internally and for external use cases. So if we can improve that, then you know, yay, but if we don't, well, we won't. Come back from retirement, we miss you. Hi, it's uh, Jonathan again. Um, I'm just curious uh, about like the mobile strategy. Like, I, I have the Wikipedia. I might have an, like an old version or something. But is there like uh, plans to add like the ability to like add pictures directly to comments and stuff directly from the app and uh, just stuff like that? Did you go to the mobile team's talk yesterday? No. Obviously, then, um, because they basically don't have any mobile developers at the moment. We don't have any mobile developers here in the room. Oh, Brian knows. Okay, but yeah, at their talk yesterday, they basically showed the feature that you're talking about, and I'm sure Brian knows more. Yeah, so uh, we're actually currently actively working on a um, app for Wiki Loves Monuments, uh, which is the uh, program that's going to run in September for you know just sort of get a bunch of people to run around, take pictures of things that are on, you know, historic re uh, place registers, et cetera, and get those uploaded to comments. Uh, so the app it, uh, um, actually will upload things directly into commons. Uh, it uses geolocation data. 
uh, you know, takes advantage of the fact that you know, you, you're in a mobile device that has a GPS, it has a camera, it has a network connection, uh, so you can do those things and upload straight to the site. Uh, and uh, over the coming months, we'll see about integrating that into the main Wikipedia app as well. Um, pictures are nice because they're standalone. Uh, videos at this time, um, that's going to need to wait on some other stuff uh, to improve uh, dealing with different data formats. Uh, but we will eventually get there. Uh, and of course, uh, editing directly um, right now is just awkward on a small screen. Uh, it's also just awkward on the website on a small screen. Uh, but the visual editor uh, project, uh, all the basics work on uh, modern iOS and Android, and uh, we want to make sure that those do get built out and fully integrated into the app and the mobile website. So over the next couple of years, that stuff's coming. Uh, I have another um, mobile app question. What, one thing I would really like to see is basically the wiki patrolling app. You know, people at the bus stop or in the train or in a boring lecture or whatever, um, they already pull out their laptop and look through recent changes and their watch list and kick out trolls and whatever. And having that on the phone, I mean, th there's, these are very small micro actions. These are, these, this, is, this is stuff that can be done in five seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds. Um, that would be extremely nice to have as a small, nice little app. It, it could even integrate some gamification thing, you know. Did you see um, Brandon's Athena talk? Nope. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm pretty active in the counter vandalism movement, as you may know. But um, uh, there's uh, currently a gadget, uh, RTRC, which also does a lot of this. Um, I hope to get it uh, into, an, uh, into an extension at some point and to get it properly localized and all that. But that's um, currently, as far as I'm aware, like the de facto standard for edit patrolling. Um, not so much for watch list and new page patrolling, uh, but for new page patrolling, there's uh, page uh, triage, which is a very important project currently at the uh, features department. Make it mobile. It, it's, 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 all, it's, it's tablet, not working yeah. on mobile, but it's tablet. The new pages extension that is currently in development, I think it's been deployed in some places. The curation toolbar has already been designed to be at least iPad friendly, touch friendly. Um, yeah, they weren't able to get it like iPhone friendly yet or Android friendly yet. Um, I guess that will take more design iterations before they can reach that. <laughs> But it, it's, it's not necessarily uh, uh, as straightforward as you may think. Just because there's a, a, a clear yes, no element uh, as part of a transaction like new page patrolling doesn't mean that to be a good new page patroller, you can just be on the phone uh, and uh, do the whole process. Because new page patrolling, for example, involves user-to-user uh, -user communications, involves uh, reviewing of page histories, involves careful application of page tags. Uh, there's a lot of actions involved uh, that go outside of the scope of a microtask. There are certain types of things that may be very easily uh, 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 transferable to microtasks or that could be potentially chunked into uh, uh, groups of tasks, some of which are very suitable for mobile and, and some of which are not. But it's, if, if our goal right now with New Pages Feed is to actually make the process of New Pages patrolling better, then we can't start from the assumption that uh, it can just easily happen on a mobile because we have to start from the process that exists today and find ways to make it more effective. So it's, it's not that, that easy, unfortunately, because Wikipedia still requires a lot of thinking. Mm, hi, my name is Kurt. I'm from Germany. Um, what about audio and video f data on Wikipedia? What's going on in that area? So um, what's going on right now is um, we're doing some infrastructure work right now to make it um, possible to, um, uh, to, to even e expand our usage at all. Um, so um, as of right now, our primary storage mechanism is a single server that's about 82% full um, at, uh, 
that up from 50% full this time last year. So you know you can you you, you can guess where the trend line is going for that. Um, so we're in the process of replacing that with. Um, a uh, clustering technology called SWIFT, which will make it possible for us to scale that a lot better and uh, remove a uh, single point of failure there. Once that project is done, um, then we have um, a number of uh, uh, new engineers planned to be hired in the coming fiscal year um, to, we've got like a couple of uh, engineering positions and a product manager position in our, in our current plan for um, uh, expanding our multimedia capability. In addition, we've been doing um, uh, uh, some amount of work um, already on, um, uh, for example, um, one of the, um, uh, a, a company called Kaltura has a um, uh, plugin for um, uh, providing better um, timed media handling in MediaWiki that is, um, uh, is hopefully um, uh, very close to being deployed, which will make um, audio video playback on comments a lot better as well. So there's a number of things that are in the pipeline right now. Um, and it's all, unfortunately, we're at that phase where, where uh, a number of things still need to kind of come together before we, everybody gets to see it. But we're, we're uh, close. What do, you, what do you think, Rob, would be an optimistic and a pessimistic uh, scenario for, for getting that? To the users? Um, well, so an optimistic scenario, um, which is actually fairly realistic, is that um, the in in the next I don't know three months we'll probably be able to um, uh, be moved over to the new backend infrastructure, which will make it possible for us to do things like up, increase the um, uh, limits on what the maximum media size is. Um, in terms of timed media handler, um, I, I don't even want to guess. <laughs> like basically, we, we, you know, we actually have somebody starting um, uh, next week um, actually uh, doing, doing some, uh, some work in, in the area. If things go really well, I mean, it could, be, uh, it could be pretty darn quickly, but maybe, yeah, Terry, do you want to talk about that? In theory, most of the TMA time media handler stuff is done. That is um, allows uh, both WebM and uh, AUG uploading and transcoding to the correct size. Right now, you just get it back in full size. Um, it has been done. It has been in code review, but uh, there's no deployment prep and other things for it. Uh, Jan Gerber from Google is coming to. Uh, uh, for three weeks here in the office, he'll be here starting next week uh, to to San Francisco. Sorry, to finish that up. Um, when that goes live, will probably uh, be a function of when Swift goes live. But we'll, hopefully, uh, if things go well, relatively speaking, we should be ready to follow that. Um, in terms of beyond that, that is as as Rob mentioned uh, related to the staffing of a new multimedia team. So the important takeaway I want you to understand is that multimedia is very important to the foundation. It's basically the first time it's been really uh, uh, where the board and other people have directly uh, paid attention to it. So it, it, it just, before this, it was uh, whenever we could get someone's time. Like uh, Michael is with Kaltura, Jan is with Google. It's like we're just trying to get things piecemeal. Uh, that's not going to happen. Uh, Rob's team going forward will, will um, when he gets that staffed up, will be dedicated to that. So we won't treat commons like it's a stepchild or something like that. Thank you, Terry, Rob. Next question. Uh, hi, I'm Nicholas Lackstrom. I'm software developer at the foundation, but I also maintain many MediaWiki installations. And I like to check the MediaWiki from the version control, git clones or subvent check checkouts, and I also do that for all the extensions I need to use. But it's really time consuming to do it and to keep them up to date. Is anybody working on to somehow automate that? Actually, this uh, question was already uh, asked. Uh, 
just before you came in. Um, the summary was that uh, Jeroen de Douw has worked on it as a, uh, a Google Summer of Code student. It was a lot of work and it was not that easy, so he was not able to finish it. Uh, Brian replied uh, that um, uh, it does not have any priority for the Wikimedia Foundation, um, uh, but we would be uh, willing to support uh, uh, volunteers that want to do on it, of course, with code review and those kinds of stuffs, right? Is that a correct? Okay. We want to see it, but yeah, we want to see it, but we have no time for it. Uh, just for cl clarification, is this about having uh, like nice interface in the installer, or just some scripts to do it from command line? I. So, so uh, uh, Nicholas, are you you're you're asking mainly about like as a developer being able to check out all of the extensions, not not as um, uh, not as a system administrator of like a MediaWiki install, being able to do it through some sort of distribution mechanism. Is that right? Uh, more so system administration, so that. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I guess. Mostly keeping them up to date. For now, I'd have to do Git update to as well uh, as well up for its extension individually. I see. Yeah, that is an extension distributor thing. Yes, you can write a shell script. However, you can ask how accessible that is to all people that want to keep a MediaWiki installation safe and up to date. Domas. But maybe, maybe can I have a, uh, uh, an answer to the other question? So basically, how do I get all the uh, all the extensions checked out, or at least all the extensions that are actually deployed at the moment checked out, just like for for testing and development? There has to be. I, I bet twenty people have written a script for that. Is there the script for that somewhere? So there is now. This was this was never really widely advertised, but for a while now there has been. Um, Ever since we upgraded to Gary 2.3, there has been an extensions meta repository that contains all extensions, like literally all of them, um, as individual SOP modules, and it updates automatically as people commit things to extensions. So um, you can quite simply clone, if you clone MediaWiki slash extensions dot git, as opposed to MediaWiki slash extensions slash something else, um, you will get um, a shallow clone with all the extensions, and then you can either choose to um, initialize the submodules for the individuals, the ones that you want, or just run the command that does them all. And then basically with, if you run git pull followed by git submodule update, um, that will update all of your extension checkouts. Cool, thanks. Um, I want to add something to, um, well, some people said you can write a shell script um, that just gets all the latest code, but this is really insufficient for MediaWiki administrators because you don't just want to be running the latest code from master, um, and you also want um, dependencies to be resolved and um, make sure that everything is compatible with each other. And right now, we simply don't have this information at all in any structured format anywhere, so it's impossible for media administrators to automate this. Uh, yeah. And also, some people don't have command line access. It's true, with, with, the, uh, with the SVN repository, we had um, snapshots of all the extensions that corresponded to the releases, which was, they were more or less random, but at least th there was, uh, well, you could assume that that version would actually work with, that, with the corresponding version of MediaWiki, and we don't have that at all anymore. With the exception that never worked. It was never accurate, and even if you pulled from the branch, the majority of the extensions that were branched we're not actually working at that point in time. So, so can we have uh, Rob answer this? Because you are basically yeah. responsible for uh, source code management and the system that, that does that. It's, okay. it's, it's not really a source code management thing. This is an extension distributor thing. So WordPress, for instance, has something that says, this version of this extension is compatible with this version of WordPress. Yeah, but I mean, like, we had something that worked. It didn't work. Mostly. 
It, no, it didn't work at all. That is not true. It's really like, true. Like, no, it, really. So it worked. It worked for the uh, Wikimedia Foundation extensions, but the majority of the rest of the extensions it did not work for. So does it still work for the Wikimedia Foundation extensions now? Well, you can pull the, uh, the WMF branch and get the extensions from that, and those will work against that. There's what. But that contains that contains Wikimedia specific patches. Mm, in theory, it does. We also have release branches for the release versions in the extension repository. This is something that hasn't really been quite figured out yet, and um, but we're, like, I using need to find <coughs> Chad Horoho and slap him for not being at the now. session. So the reason this hasn't come up in Git yet is because we haven't done a release yet from Git, because 1.20 is still in development. I imagine and hope and expect that as soon as 1.20 will be released that any extension developer, including the foundation itself, Will branch rel 1.20 just like we used one, to do in SVN. There's some reason not to do came that. Out of Git, didn't it? And I've been, and I'm, for myself, I've been doing that for some of the extensions that I maintain. Uh, I just created a branch called rel 1.19 in Git, and that works perfectly fine. Um, uh, uh, what is still pending, and that's probably what you're. So now uh, each, Sam are each extension at. maintainer has to like. The extension maintainer is. The, this is how WordPress does it as well. Is that the extension maintainer is is expected to branch uh, at points that they support. And in fact, that is a more reliable method of oh, actually sorry. doing this than what we did in SVN. So if the extension maintainers branch in their own extensions and maintain branches for versions, we could actually use that as the basis for compatibility versions for uh, MediaWiki versions extensions in an extension distributor of some, of some kind. Um, Kurt? Um, I'm also a little bit doing FreeBSD uh, parts maintaining, handful of parts, and basically they are using uh, upstream software to update complex installations. So how are those kind of software distribution mechanisms supposed to work with the extensions of MediaWiki? Um, so you're asking like as a as a FreeBSD ports, upstream parts like, maintainer. Uh, okay. Basically, yeah. parts seem to be downstream from the extension. So you have MediaWiki as a certain mm -hmm. version. You have an extension, whatever, mm -hmm. at a certain version sh supposed to be working. How do you get this into your installation as a FreeBSD system admin? So um, to um, with respect to FreeBSD specifically, it's been a it's been a while since I've b sure, but um, yeah. So um, the one of the things that we're trying to do now is build a better relationship with the downstream distributors. Um, so there is a, a mailing list. I'm try I can't remember the name of it. Is it MediaWiki Distributors? Something like that. I, that that was recently created, um, uh, which is for folks like the Debian packagers and the, you know, so FreeBSD ports would certainly be welcome there and so on um, for um, figuring out how to properly package MediaWiki for use um, and, and for packaged um, use in those distributions so that, um, so that, you know, we can get to a day where, like right now, um, when somebody comes to one of our mailing lists and says, hey, I'm having this problem, I've got this installed on Debian, for example, and we say, well, don't in use the default package, like, you know, download it off of our web, down the tar of all the webs off of our website and use that, and, you know, that doesn't tend to go over that, that well, but it's like, but, but that's, but that is currently a problem, and so if, you know, it is one of those things that, that um, uh, back to my earlier comment about wanting to see um, more sort of community leadership on the non-Wikimedia uses of uh, MediaWiki, that's, uh, that's one of those areas where we're seeing some activity and collaboration already, and so that, um, I'd encourage you to join that list and, and maybe ask that same question there. We have about 10 minutes left, so that's about three questions. So who wants to ask the next one? Hi, I'm Chris Marciniak. Uh, I heard a rumor that there's going to be more integration of Lua scripts into coming version of coming versions of MediaWiki. Um, so, if you, could you comment on uh, what are the plans for that, and what's what's the timeline for? 
deploy of that? Yeah. Um, yeah, so Lua, um, uh, currently um, that extension, so there's an extension right now that you can actually download and install for MediaWiki. Um, what's that? Um, so the extension itself is called Scribuntu. Um, the, um, the, uh, the, then what the um, uh, rest of the, um, uh, and then that, that actually allows for embedding of several different programming languages, Lua being the default implementation. Um, but JavaScript is actually one that if you've got enough persistence you can uh, get running as well from what I understand. Um, that, um, w what we plan, we plan to get that running on um, uh, MidiWiki.org in the relatively near future. Um, so like sometime this fiscal year and then gradually roll it out to other wikis as, um, as it's ready and as those communities uh, um, are, are ready for uh, that as a, as a templating uh, language. It wouldn't be a replacement for templates, it would be an addition, uh, I mean, an additional tool for people to uh, write their templates in. What's that? And oh, that's right, and there is a labs instance right now. Um, is it, is it uh, scrimento dot, dot, uh, wmflabs org? Hello, that's as a follow up to that one. I did, actually I had no idea that JavaScript was is is supportable or in theory supportable via the uh, via the Scribuntu extension. Uh, given that, what's the relationship between that and the uh, embeddable uh, JavaScript thing that you, that Brian, you uh, talked about yesterday? Uh, well, they're actually uh, sort of coming at, at the problem from two different directions. Uh, the Scribuntu uh, template scripting is basically a way to create static wiki text um, out of some form of data. So, you know, you put in some parameters to your template and it spits out a table or an info box or a chessboard or whatever, but it just runs once when you parse and it creates that output. Uh, and that, that actually runs um, on the server side. The uh, embedded scripting uh, that I've been working on is for uh, client side scripting uh, which is actually meant to be able to do more interactive things. Uh, so that way you can use the uh, full HTML, SVG, CSS stack um, and be able to uh, you know, respond to user input. Um, and those will be much more isolated um, in that they won't be able to access other templates as directly um, because for security reasons they would have to be uh, very specifically sandboxed. The very last question will be, again? <laughs> oh, it's not important. So. However, no one else opts in. Um, I've met someone here, Matthews, who said he wants uh, some sort of a single sign on with Wiki, Media Wiki and Moodle. What about this kind of integration with other systems or, or cross authentication? Did you say Google? Moodle. Moodle. It's an ELO. Is there anyone who knows <laughs> anything about that? <laughs> so, um, do you mean from a third party point of view or a Wikimedia point of view? From a third party point of view, there's a number of different ways to integrate these. Uh, Moodle has LDAP authentication, so does MediaWiki if you wanted to do that. Um, you could also do OpenID. Um, once we have OAuth support, we can probably do that, but there's a number of different authentication plugins that would actually make this work. And Facebook Connect. <laughs> So that ends our Ask the Developer session. We hope that you like the format that we designed for you. Uh, we try to be highly interactive and have everyone on at the same thing, not have like 
four or five people sit behind a table, so it's really like more like a round table discussion. Um, I enjoyed it, hope Ryan did so too. Um, see you next year, see you next conference. Thanks for being here, and we'll, yeah, we'll try and keep writing great stuff for you. Bye-bye. <laughs>